Steiner, Doctor of Medicine. Tonight's story has the title, The Homecoming. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. The actual case history tonight concerns an affliction that has inspired dread among the human race for 6,000 years. The object in point, a military citation awarded for valor at Anzio, Italy, 1944. The case in point, the recipient of that citation, Alan Connolly, born August 17, 1919, to missionary parents in the Philippine Islands, where he spent his childhood years. In 1933, he moved to the United States with his parents. He died April 3, 1951. He returned to the living, May 12th, 1955. <laughs> change your hair. You look younger. No, it's been four years. How was the airplane trip? Oh, all right. Dr. Steiner met me at the airport. He'll be up in a minute. Oh, and I bake you a cake for your homecoming party. And I invited our friends Bill and Katie and the Colemans, Mr. and Mrs. Coleman. I want to make everything nice for it's nice. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me. I just happened to see you arrive with Mr. Connolly a few minutes ago. You're their doctor, aren't you? That's right. Well, I'm glad to know you, doctor. I'm Mrs. McMullen. I'm the landlady here. I'd like to ask you something, if you don't mind. It will only take a minute. Sure. Go right ahead. Well, uh, the folks from the public health department were around talking to the tenants about Mr. Conley. They gave us a nice talk. They said Mr. Conley was perfectly safe and we didn't have one thing to worry about. I think that's a very reasonable statement. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. There's been so much talk. Some people say he's dangerous and others say he's harmless. I'd like to get down to brass tacks. You're his doctor. You'd know more about it than anyone would. Is he safe? Mrs. McMullen, there is no doubt in my mind. Nobody in this apartment house is in any danger because of Al Connolly. If they were, he wouldn't be here. I'm very glad to know that. You say there's been a lot of talk about it. Not only here, but all over town. They're dead set against it. I don't know what's going to happen, Doctor. Don't they realize there's no danger? Don't they know what the real conditions are? 
All they know is that Al Conley has leprosy. Well, thank you very much. So sorry Bill and Katie couldn't come. They phone. They say, yes, maybe they can come tonight. And the Coleman's, they didn't even telephone. Well, I think they're being very kind. They probably don't want to disturb you. It's Al's first day home in four years. You gonna take your old job back, Al? That's right. It's the only trade I know. Besides, Mr. Gilbert said my job was waiting for me whenever I was ready. It sure be great to get back. Hope everything works out all right. Oh, don't you worry. It will be all right. It's hard to believe. It's really hard to believe, you know that, Doctor? Four years ago, I sat here, and I thought that everything was finished. It was a Friday night, remember? Uh, I remember. I sat here, and you had to tell me what it was. I don't think I ever felt lower in my life. As far as I was concerned, I was dead. And leaving Angela, that was the big thing. Over here, just a couple of years, she hardly knew the language. All we had was a few dollars in the bank. It was pretty hard to take. I never thought that, that I would see daylight again. I was wrong. The hospital to which Alan Connolly was sent houses an average of 325 patients with leprosy. The United States Public Health Service Hospital at Carville, Louisiana. Like many others, Alan Connolly arrived in the deepest despair. He'd been separated from his wife, his home, his friends. Above all, there was the dread of the disease that afflicted him. A disease brought about by a tiny organism, Microbacterium leprae. Before 1941, the most widely used medication against leprosy was Chalmugra oil, derived from the fruit of a tropical tree. Since 1941, its use has been almost abandoned in the face of a sudden blessing, far beyond the fondest hopes of leprosy victims. The blessing took the form of a new series of drugs, the sulfones, chemical compounds quite unlike the sulfas or penicillin. The sulfones are given orally or by injection, and although there have been a few failures, the results have been most remarkable. Leprosy affects the whole being, generally attacking the fibers of the skin and nerves. In the affected areas of the body, there's usually a loss of sensation. The individual feels no pain, cannot distinguish heat from cold. Weakness or paralysis of important muscle groups may also occur. Orthopedic and plastic surgery have also presented a new development in the correction of disfigurements and deformities. Thus it was for Alan Connolly and most of his other fellow victims. But his four-year stay at Carville was not confined to medical treatment alone. While undergoing clinical care, there was abundant opportunity to participate in group activities, gaining new knowledge and skills in preparation for his release. On many fronts, research keeps going forward. The transmission of the disease is still the big mystery, still the biggest problem. Sooner or later, that too will be solved, and science can then evolve even more effective methods of combating, controlling, and eradicating leprosy. In a sense, leprosy, which strikes more commonly at young children, parallels tuberculosis in that a stage of apparent arrest may be reached and the patient may enjoy long periods relatively free from disease activity. Today, the emotional, mental, and spiritual rehabilitation of the patient is a matter of great importance. The goal is to return a man cured and happy back to society to take his rightful place with his fellow man. The physical requirements for release are two. Absence of active lesions, failure to find leprosy germs in 12 consecutive monthly laboratory tests. Finally it came. Alan Connolly satisfied both requirements. The day of departure had finally arrived. He was free. Years. 
four years, one month, and nine a day. The roughest thing about it was being away, worrying about you. Sometimes I didn't know whether I could last it out. Well, you did last it out, Al. That's the important part. It's all behind you. Well, the doctor is right, Alan. It's all over with. Everything's going to be all right now. I know it is. Everything's going to be fine. Yes, that's right. Alan Connolly. Yes, ma'am. I'll wait. Yes? Oh, I see. No, no, I'll be here all day. All right, I'll wait for his call. Thank you very much. Oh, and I've been better. How you been? How you feeling? How's Bill? Oh, he's fine, just fine. He's awfully busy at the store. Oh, gosh, I guess it's nice to be home, huh? Oh, nice. It's wonderful. Hey, when's the old man coming around to say hello? Oh, I've been home two days, and I haven't heard a word from him. Oh, it's just like Katie says, that he's been very busy. Uh, yes, he really has. Honestly, he hasn't been home to dinner about twice this week. But he did call you from the store, but he said your line was busy. Oh, Maybe if things let up, we can get together this weekend. All right, that's a promise. I'm holding you to it. Come on, sit down. Let's have some coffee. Well, really, Al, I'd love to, but I'm, I'm late already. I have a lot of shopping to do. Oh, there's enough time for shopping. Please, Katie, sit down. Well, I'm afraid not, Angela. I'll be late for the dentist. I just have enough time to do my shopping. Uh, well, it's nice to see you, Al. Hope we can get together this weekend. Yeah, sure. Yeah. See you later. Goodbye, Katie. I... I... See you. I'll call you tomorrow. Yes, all right, honey. Bye. I don't get it. What's the matter with her? I don't know. I didn't notice anything. Must be Mr. Gilbert calling back. Hello? Yes, this is Alan Connolly. Yes, thank you. Hello, Mr. Gilbert. How are you? Oh, good. Oh, I'm fine. Couldn't be better. Yeah, uh, day before yesterday. Well, I tried to get you sooner, but you were out. Oh, I see. Uh, what's that? Well, I thought I'd uh, come down and talk to you. Well, uh, well, I don't get it, Mr. Gilbert. When I went to the hospital, you said... But when I... You said when I came back, I... I don't understand, Mr. Gilbert. The, the public health department told me that... The man in the shop. What about him? Well, those guys don't have to be worried about me, Mr. Gilbert. I'm all right. I don't care what anybody says. I'm perfectly all right. Well, I can prove I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, I understand you're in a tough spot. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. There's a new plant down in Oakdale. Well, I hear you can make a fortune in overtime. Oh, good evening, Angela. I hope I'm not disturbing. Not at all. Mrs. McCullen, come in, please. Thank you. Hi, Mrs. Mack. How are you? Oh, just fine. Keeping busy. There's always so much to do. Getting situated? 
Well, I've been trying to, yeah. <laughs> oh, Mrs. McCullum, won't you sit down and uh, have something to eat? No, no, thank you. I just came in for a minute. I was just going to have a beer. Would you like to have one with me? Uh, no, thanks. I'm on a diet. Uh, I just, um, well, as a matter of fact, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Well, sure thing. What can we do for you? Well, I just don't know how to say it. It's, uh, you know, it's rather hard being a landlady and all. Well, what is it, Mrs. Mack? What's the matter? Well, I, I don't know exactly what to say, but I guess there's only one way to say anything, and that's direct, and I might as well say it. It's you, Mr. Connolly. They don't want you here. Who doesn't want me here? Who are you talking about? The tenants. They don't want you around. They got up a petition. I got it this morning. They say if you don't leave, they will. Every one of them. No, no, that's not fair. They don't understand. I know it's not fair, and it's stupid, and it's ignorance. But they've laid their law down to me, and what can I do? If you don't leave, they're all moving out at the end of the week. Every last one of them. Who did it? Who was it who started it? I don't know, Mr. Conley. All I know is that I'm in the middle. And I'm sorry, believe me. What's the matter with them? They've been told, don't they know? Don't they understand plain English? I'm all right. They can't catch anything from me. What's wrong with people? I don't know, Mr. Conley. I guess it's just ignorance and superstition. But what can I do? We have to move. Alan and me, we, we have to go. We don't have to go. They can't do this. I'm all right. You can't make us leave either. Well, I don't want to tell you what to do one way or the other, Mr. Conley. But we all have our problems, and I have mine, and sometimes they get mixed up together. I don't think I understand. I have four kids, as you know. And my oldest boy has just started a college. The other three boys were in high school. And it takes a lot of money to educate them, buy them clothes and food, and I'm the only one to do it. All I have is this apartment house. It's the difference between something and nothing. If the house is full, it's fine, but the house is empty and word gets around. Yes, yes, I see. But why can't they understand? What's the matter with these people? They're grown up. At least they're supposed to be. They were told. They know I'm all right. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't all right. What's the matter with people anyway? I don't know, Mr. Conley. I can sympathize with you, and that's all. It's a terrible choice to make. It, it's you or my family. I'm sorry. Wherever or whenever a human being is hurt, and hurt unfairly because of prejudice, ignorance, superstition, it's my guess that decent people will realize what's happened. And sooner or later, they'll rectify that hurt. And that, in a word, is the reason for calling you here tonight. Your neighbors, you live together in this apartment house under a common roof. And in a sense, that gives you common interests, common responsibilities. And that brings us to the case in point. You've seen fit, singly and collectively, to take action against two of your neighbors, Alan Connolly and his wife, Angela. You feel that one or both of them is unfit to live with, unsafe to live with. Now, if that's true, then very possibly you have a right to demand that action be taken to protect you and your families. Self-protection against contagion, crime, disease, these are rights inherent to any community. If an individual offends or endangers the group, then the group has a valid license to remove that danger. So if it's true what you feel and think about Alan Connolly and his wife, then by all means, get rid of them. Cast them out, get them out of the way. The only thing that remains to be resolved is, is this true, what you feel and think about Alan Connolly? Uprooting a man and his wife 
forcing them out of their home, branding them as unclean, undesirable. I think you'll all agree this is a drastic move. And it calls for some very serious deliberation. I know that Al Connolly's conduct and character are being beyond question, his military service, don't make this decision any easier for you. These decisions are always difficult, and sometimes they seem cruel. But if there is any real danger to you, then you have to be practical, and somebody has to suffer. Now then, is it true? Al Connolly is suffering from what is commonly called leprosy. Some people prefer to call it Hansen's disease, but that's beside the point. The only question that's of any importance here is whether or not there is any danger to you, the people close to you, the people you love. Now, let me review this case for you briefly. Al was born in the Philippine Islands. He spent his childhood there. And we believe that it was there that he contracted the disease. Hansen's disease usually takes a long time to manifest itself. But it finally did. And about four years ago, Al came into my office. And there were checks and examinations, and finally a diagnosis, Hansen's disease, leprosy. Acting under my advice, Al voluntarily had himself committed to the United States Public Health Service Hospital at Carville, Louisiana. Determined to go there and to be treated until he could come home without any fear of jeopardizing his wife or his friends or his neighbors. So that's the case for Alan Connolly. According to official hospital records, he achieved the goal he was aiming for when he got on the train and left this town for Carville. He's back home, his disease arrested, ready to take his rightful place in society. He knows he can walk among you without causing harm to any of you. And there are at least a dozen highly trained medical doctors who agree with him. But that's no matter. In the final analysis, the future of Al Connolly and his wife, and to a great extent, their welfare, their lives, and their happiness rests in your hands your hands alone, and the hands of anyone who might happen to be their neighbors. As I see it, there are two roads open to you. You can accept Al Connolly for the man he is, the friend he is, not for his sense of duty, his courage, and not because he closed himself up in a hospital for four years when he first learned he had the disease for fear he might cause harm to some of you. And remember, he didn't have to do that. Don't accept Al for any of these reasons. Not for his sense of honor or his personal sacrifice. Accept him on the basis of cold medical fact. Accept him on the basis of official U.S. Public Health Service hospital records. Accept him because a staff of highly trained medical specialists not only treated him for four years, but examined him thoroughly before they decided he could return home and resume a normal life without fear of jeopardizing the health of anyone around him. Now, that's one course of action open to you. And the alternative, get rid of Al Connolly. Quoting the Bible, cast them out. Age-old superstition, fables from the dark ages dictate that leprosy means automatic doom, total exclusion. You have no more rights than the lowest of animals. Ignorance, prejudice, unwillingness to look for the truth. These dictate pain, injustice, and terrible wanton cruelty. Those are the two choices open to you. It's your decision, and yours alone.